One of the most common questions I get from clients is, how do I deal with passive aggressive behavior? And there's a really good reason for that because passive aggressive behavior is so destructive and it's also really slippery. It's hard to get your hands around because what it is is behavior and communication that is very indirect. So it's like it's got a veil over the communication and it's like trying to um, figure out how do you, what, what's really happening here. It's much more difficult than if somebody just comes in and yells at you. <laughs> so in this video, which is part one of a three-part series, I am going to share with you the three major buckets of the types of passive-aggressive behavior that we encounter. And then I'm going to share with you three reasons why people communicate passive-aggressively or they behave passive-aggressively. And the third is three really powerful reflective questions if you have a tendency to communicate passive aggressively. So this is the second video I am going to share with you how to take off the veil of that passive aggressive communication if you're experiencing it from another person. And then the third is how do you deal with this on teams? I'm Karen Valencic and I am the author and founder of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. And I've been working with leaders and teams for three decades in the areas of collaboration and conflict mastery. And so I've seen a lot and I've heard a lot. Okay, so first I promised you three buckets. Now there are millions of examples of passive aggressive behavior. I've taken these and I put them in three major buckets just to make it simple. In this video, I don't want it to last for hours. <laughs> Before I go into the three buckets, I want to just own for myself that I have done, I have done these things and likely you may have done it as well. Look at this first video as a way of identifying for yourself if you ever do these things and why you might do them. And then we'll get on to the next part of it in terms of how do you deal with it if somebody else is doing it. Okay, so the first bucket is where there is a really thick veil. And that is because it's withdrawal, avoidance, or total silence. And that is so hard to deal with. So people aren't answering any kind of communication, whether it's text, email, phone calls, um, they just kind of disappear. It also, in this bucket, I would put in behavior where you hold somebody hostage to the last minute when you know they need something from you. So this is this is very passive aggressive and it, you know, you could even be an invitation you need to respond to and, and, and you wait until the very, very last minute, somewhat intentional and it's passive aggressive. Now I want to put a footnote with this because you know, sometimes silence is something that you need to process a conflict, but if you need that time and that space, communicate, just say, I am working through this right now and I need to figure some things out. And when you communicate that, it's no longer passive aggressive because you've communicated appropriately. So that is bucket number one. So bucket number two, the veil is a little more transparent because you are there, you're in person. And this is where we're with a person and there might be humor, one-upmanship, unsolicited advice, or a a really sly jab at somebody. So I think probably we've all experienced that. But whenever you hear someone say, oh, I was just kidding, that's passive aggressive behavior. Um, when you are getting somebody telling you what to do, that's really passive aggressive behavior. Something like, you know, that seems to work okay, but I, you know, I would have done it differently. Or where I used to be, we did it this way. Those are all things that are passive aggressive. So the third bucket, the veil is actually over the victim's <laughs> head because the third bucket is when you are talking behind somebody's back to other people. You're talking to other people about somebody who is not represented there. And that's also called gossip. And you can dress that up however you want, but it's passive aggressive and it's very, very destructive. And that happens on teams a lot. So that is again called gossip. Okay, so now I promised you to provide you with three reasons why people communicate and behave passive aggressively. So the first reason is 
because they have not learned the skills to be able to have a conversation that is both transparent and appropriate. A lot of people haven't learned those skills. And many people learn their skills from their family or the media or our entertainment, which tends to be filled with passive aggressive behavior. Number one is they just haven't learned the skills. The second reason is, and this is gonna sound harsh, the second reason is, is people feel insecure and they feel better about themselves when they can put other people down or they can control people through their inaction or disappearance. That is a sign of insecurity. I know that sounds harsh, but I find it to be true, even in my own situation. The third reason is it's part of the atmosphere. It's something that maybe in the culture that you're in is so widely accepted, people don't even think twice about it. And that's why it's important if you've got a team to really set some boundaries on that. And I will deal with that more in my part three of this video series. Before I share with you those final three reflective questions, I wanna just say these skills are something that you can learn. And they are not easy, but they are kind of simple. And they require a lot of support, I think, to change that behavior when it's so baked in. There are resources down in the description of this video I invite you to take a look at and join me on some other places. I also would love it if you would subscribe and like this video so I can continue to make more of them. Okay, so the final three things. As if you found yourself maybe in one of those buckets of passive aggressive behavior, there's three things I think that are really great reflective questions. The first question is, and it's a good question before any type of communication, is what's your intention around this behavior? And you know, if you can identify your intention, oftentimes you can just share that intention and something that was passive aggressive no longer is passive aggressive. It's transparent and appropriate. Number two reflective question, what's your barrier to communicating more transparently and appropriate. What's the barrier for you? Is that fear? Do you have a fear of doing that? Or is it or you don't know what to say? What is the barrier for you? Third question is how are you benefiting from that passive aggressive behavior? And so those questions are really important and they help lead you to some better communication skills. So that is it for this one. Look for part two and part three, and I will see you down the road here. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.